Good morning. Good morning. Here we are, gathered together. Thank you all for joining us, choosing this time to be together. We have a wonderful morning in store. Every morning, of course, can be wonderful, depending how we tune in, plug in, attune, and be receptive. And this one will be another special one. My name is Jim Quacko. I am honored to be the Platform Fellow today. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the spiritual strength of unity. We light the candle. Reminds us the light of the world shines through us, around us, in us, all those with whom we are connected and in much more. And so we celebrate the light, the love, divine light, divine love. We invoke it, ask it to be part of our lives and attune ourselves to it. And so let us take a moment. I'll say a phrase first and I want you to repeat it after me. I am the light of the world. Together? We are the light of the world. Indeed, thank you. And create a oneness of vibration. I'm going to set in motion the chime. And now we're all connected. The same key, the same chord. Music is beginning to rise within us. And now the daily word. The word for today is steadfast. The affirmation is I am a steadfast spiritual seeker. No matter where I may be on the path, sometimes my spiritual path is easy and sometimes not so easy, hard. There are times I enjoy new insights, clarity, and peace, and other times I struggle, stuck without direction, lonely on my walk with God. At times like these, I renew my commitment to the spiritual path. Although my attention may have wandered, the divine presence within me has always remained steadfast, as close as my next thought. Wherever I am, in space, time, and consciousness, I discover the love, strength, and wisdom of God expressing itself through me. And from Psalm 139, if I take wings of the morning and settle at the forest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. <clears throat> Steadfast. Quite a strengthening term and the meaning and power to which it's connected. To me, it's the power of persistence. Oh, I had an interesting event happen recently. Ooh, a difficulty with a family member. Things got difficult. Sparks were flying a bit. And then we parted for a while, and in a few moments of reflection, I found a center of peace again, and um, reconnected, and remembered soul to soul we are connected, and relate to one another, and do the best we can, and it helped recreate the memories of what we've done, what we do together, and what lies ahead in the best way possible. I wasn't sure what would happen, but I invoked it, paid attention to it, energized it. And the next day, things were much better. There was appropriate remorse, regret, <laughs> and recommitment to steadfastly pursue what we stood for. For me, major strength, connection to spirit is steadfastness. And it's all part of the courage and commitment and 
persistence necessary for being on the spiritual path and continually reawakening it as often as possible. Thank you, Noreen. <clears throat> Our Red Rose today is in honor of David Doner. He passed away this week. Our dear friend, oh, active in the choir. Actually, I got to know David through Unity. Oh, over 25 years ago, soon after we came to Santa Barbara. And it was so nice to meet a fellow, like-minded physician, um, quite a marvelous man, very bright man, internist, he became a nephrologist, kidney specialist. He started the dialysis center in Santa Maria, still ongoing. Um, it's just a huge gift to that community. A marvelous man in many ways. He loved coming to Unity, loved having his family participate here. And then one day he decided to join the choir. He loved the singing. I don't think he missed a practice. It was rare if he did. And um, we enjoyed having him. And uh, often came early and you know, was ready to go and ready to roll. And we were glad to have him with us. He went to Carnegie Hall with us when we were invited there a few years ago. And uh, looked forward to the major events and did everything he could about them. One of the key things that David often, often uh, talked about uh, we, whenever we would have church gatherings of any kind, and if, if, if the group was invited to speak or say a few words, David often raised his hand and stood up and said, the key to spiritual living is kindness. Kindness. He was really moved by a book he had read, um, and um, he shared that wherever he could. He gave me a copy of the book once, and, and he lived it. He lived it well. And so, David, I know if you were here, you would want to speak up and add a few more words, but <laughs> we were glad to have you. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being with us. Get ready, my soul I'm diving in Get ready, my soul I'm diving in To the sweetest kind of love To the sweetest kind of life Get ready, get ready, 
my soul Everything I've ever done Everything I've ever seen Everything I've lost or won Everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To this present moment Here To a new beginning Here And I'm seeing life so clearly now Get ready my soul I'm diving in get ready my soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life so get ready Get ready, my soul Cause here I go Deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before Here I go Closer, closer, closer to my sacred source Get ready, my soul I'm diving in Get ready, my soul I'm diving in To the deepest kind of love To the sweetest kind of life so get ready, get ready, my soul. So get ready, get ready, my Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Thriving Airlines Flight 2020. <laughs> Heading to your zone of genius. Now, there might be 50 ways to leave your lover, but there's only two exits off this flight. Right here. Yes. But you're not going to want to exit this flight because this flight is about your life and your liveliness and your experience of being you. So if you exit, you'll miss the experience of knowing the genius in you. There will be no beverages or snacks offered on this flight because traveling to your zone of genius is remembering that you have everything you need and you always will. There might be or there will not be a change of air pressure on the outside, but there could be a shift of energy on the inside. And all that psychic baggage you carry along in your life, you don't need it here. No baggage, just breathing, just being. So I am your genius flight coordinator. Mm -hmm. In earlier times in my life, I was called a, a flight attendant. Uh, uh, in England, an air hostess. But I prefer the genius title, and I hope that you will be more and more comfortable with it. I figure if the people at Apple can be called a genius, we can too, yes? So maybe there's something inside of ourselves that we are wanting to know and will be knowing as we come together. I call this Thriving Airlines because we have, we're in a series of talking about thriving and what thriving is. So I invite you to sit back and relax and enjoy this experience of listening to something new. 
and perhaps a way that you can um, relax more into your greatness and into your genius. So there won't be any in-flight movie or entertainment because the entertainment that you're looking for, the inspiration, is again, something that you're going to experience and feel inside yourself. Have you have, have, you have had for many years in this life, but sometimes we don't pay attention. We don't become as steadfast as we want to be and as we have the option to be in this lifetime. So just know we're going to be going up in altitude, spiritual altitude, spiritual consciousness, and you're here by divine appointment. So just know that you are ready, and so is everyone in your own home or online, Facebook, our website. It's all very exciting, this thriving airlines flight to your zone of genius. So I'd like to show you our flight plan. It looks like this. You know, our monitor here is in, in the um, cabin <laughs> is not working, so I don't know when the... But um, if you see our flight plan, it is a fish that is jumping from a small bowl to a larger bowl. And that's our flight plan, friends. And we recognize that this can happen to us at some, some times in our life, is that we have become comfortable in a smaller container than can control, contain our life. And so we can be, maybe you're born in that bowl, in that kind of consciousness, in that family, in that religion, in that um, circumstance, in that ethnicity. We don't know what it was, but there's something that drives us, something that brought you to be on this flight today that is something bigger. And it just comes from your own inspiration. It comes from your own feeling. Uh, we can call that sometimes in this spiritual community divine discontent. So we don't have to call it being bored or being restless or something's wrong with me or why can't I be like everyone else. Uh, you can take a moment to look at your thumbprint because it's not like anyone else's. And so we recognize that there is a uniqueness about us, but somehow we can all be on this flight together and understand what we're talking about. So there's that fish. What do you think it takes for that fish to decide to go from a smaller bowl to a bigger bowl. What might be some of those concepts, some of those, that energy? Thinking, uh, thinking differently, yes. Uh, courage, willingness, exuberance. So, desire, yes, right. And, and from the Latin, of, of God, yeah. Um, what is that? Pain, pain can be, an, 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 yes, it can be a motivator. And then we know that it's not constant. It is, there's not a constant to this, but there's a place of this spiritual essence. That's why we call this thriving airlines. So we're gonna move through what are called zones because today's topic is how to move from your comfort zone to your stellar zone. And I'm gonna take some, uh, some pieces of information from Gay Hendricks book, The Big Leap. Um, and, and Gay Hendricks is actually from this area, and I've been uh, talking about The Big Leap for many years, and, and he has on the front the little goldfish jumping from the small bowl to the big bowl. So we're talking about these zones of living, and you may just recognize, maybe I've been in one of these old previous zones as I'm going toward my zone of genius. So the first zone is called the zone of incompetence. And the zone of incompetence is when you are doing something that you're not that interested in and you're not even that good at it, all right? But for some reason, you have felt that, nah, this is enough. I mean, who do I think I am, right? We don't recognize we are God in action. You know, it's like Marianne Williamson, we're, we're more afraid of our success than our failure, right? So we can, we can sometimes stay in those zones of incompetence. I don't think anyone on this flight can even relate to this. But let me tell you a story from many years ago. Um, I, earlier in my life, was um, not coming, not living from the inside out. And I would listen to other people's opinions and often my parents of this is what you should do. And I, and I never really understood the idea of spiritual awakening or of original thought that someone has mentioned here. And I was listening to a lot of shoulds. Now I've heard, and maybe you've heard too, you've been shitting on yourself too long. 
It's should. It's the word should. Don't get upset with me. It's just the word should. So we don't want to um, be dealing with the shoulds, but I did. And so I was in a vocational program as a dental assistant. And basically, they put me in a room where I was looking up everybody's birthdays and sending out little birthday notes and then teaching kids or anyone how to brush their teeth and giving them that package and how to floss and, and very simple as my vocational job would allow. But one day, uh, the office was very busy, and they ran out of real dental assistance, and they asked me to come in because a gentleman's tooth was being extracted, and they wondered if I could come in and, and hold the suction, right? And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just doing the birthdays. Come on, girl, you want to learn about this job? And so there I was with my little suction, you know, standing there, in my new little nursing shoes that I was very proud of having these, these I had the outfit, but the uh, incompetence was very clear, and the guy that was getting his tooth extracted was looking at the dentist like, I don't know what she's doing here, but I don't think she's going to make it. And so I was there doing that suction, and I just went, uh, and I just fell backwards because... Um, Blood is really not my thing. And, it, and, and all of the whole medical world is not my thing. So I don't know what happened to the gentleman and his tooth. God bless him. But they, uh, they, when I woke up, I was in the lounge with my feet up on a chair, and all of the other assistants were like, mm. yeah. So I was invited to try another vocation. Yes, I was. And it was a big, big blessing that, that actually that happened. I mean, I'm sorry for the guy with the tooth, but, um, but that I was escorted out of my zone of incompetence. And if anyone is experiencing that, you'll notice what starts happening when you're in the zone of incompetence is you, you start getting sick or you start getting sad or you start feeling, you know, sort of a me against the world feeling. So let us continue on our journey up in altitude and in consciousness. And our next zone is, can be called the zone of competence. And this is where you might be at some point in your life that um, you're good at what you're doing, your, your relationship's okay, things are, your health is okay, and things are okay, but there, there's a sense of not really feeling the aliveness of life. You know, you sort of, eh, you know, it's a little bit like a cloud over your um, head. You know, a little bit of I'm living in a fog. And I know um, from being on flights for many years, right on the other side of the clouds is the sun. Every time. I lived in London. I know these things because it's cloudy there all the time. But the idea of the zone of confidence is you really are just feeling, it's kind of like the word work is, is a four-letter word. The word life is a four-letter word. You know, everything feels like a four-letter word that it's hard. So the zone of competence is another place where we're ready to move on. And so we keep up, we come on up in consciousness one more level, and that's the zone that a lot of people can be stuck in, and that's the zone of excellence, where you might have spent a lot of time honing a skill, and maybe you've really made a lot of money, or you have a lot of prestige, and it is a real identity of yours, this zone of excellence. And it can be called the golden handcuffs. You know, there's a lot of, I know part of the reason that I'm um, not a air hostess anymore is there was a time where I just wasn't interested in it anymore. I was tired and I didn't feel well. I was really good. People liked me. I liked people. They, um, you know, I never organized my cart that well, but the other flight attendants who often don't like people, if you've noticed, they would just throw me out in the aisle. Heidi can talk to anyone. Get out there, send her out there. So I think that my record was great, but I wasn't happy anymore. And in fact, I was just about to get a raise when because of a unity prosperity class, I came to understand that if I wasn't connected, if I didn't feel happy, then, my, then this job, whatever I call a job, whatever I call the life, there was something more. You know, there was the bigger fish tank. There was the bigger place to go. And it took a lot of support from prayer support People saying, I know you can't believe in you, but I'll believe in you until you believe in you. And that kind of idea. I know that um, Tamma Keeves will go to one of our quotes here. Um, she says that um, in this idea of, of our going from 
Uh, one, she said, okay, here we go, I'll just look up. It, it's a travesty to ignore, discount, or block the goodness in your life. You can unwittingly live a life that is smaller than your true nature. And let's just take a breath into that to kind of lighten that up. But you know that if, I don't know how many folks when you were young, or maybe your school system, or, but probably not, didn't say, you can be anything you want to be. Your school counselor, your people around you, they might have not known, and because and, they hadn't experienced in themselves. But you can see that, that discounting who we are is a travesty. And we can actually live a life smaller than what we wanted, but just because of the um, training we've had. And that's why this is spirit school when we come here. I remember when I first decided to be a minister, my dad was a, was a physician and my mom was a school teacher and, and they, were, they were together a long, long time. But I kind of saw that dynamic. And so when I thought about being a minister, I thought, oh, I'll be a minister's wife. That's what I'll do, and I'll just wait for that minister to come home and, and he'll tell me all these wise things. And, then I started meeting female ministers, and I thought, oh, no, I don't want to be, it's fine to be in partnership like that, but that wasn't, I had, I had let myself live in a smaller place just because my mind had not opened. So I'm so glad we're on our flight together as we just recognize, huh, I wonder what might happen if I just followed something I enjoy and saw what unfolded, because that's what will happen. So we're moving on as we come up here into our uh, zone of genius. Now, your zone of genius is living and expressing your natural genius, which is your ultimate plan to success and life satisfaction. Living and expressing your true nature. And um, Penny, thank you for jumping around with these slides, but can we go back to the Tama slide where she says, you want to be just as interested in your joy as you are in your sadness. And let's, so one of the greatest choices you will ever make is to take your joy seriously, at least as seriously as your pain. Yeah, right? Oh my gosh, do we have a thing about talking about our pain? And I get it, you know, oh, you know, have you watched the news? Did you hear what happened? You know, right? And we, all of a sudden, you might have had a, seen a beautiful flower and then somebody's going to talk about something and you go, oof. So we want to talk about, and I'd like you to practice this skill, talking about your joy. Something that really happened that just kind of blew you away today. What's going on? So that'll help you start living in your zone of genius. So what's really wonderful about this flight, because we're all in here together, online, this flight, Thriving Airlines, we notice many people, and if you talk to people about their stories, we've all had breakthroughs. All of us, you know, we've all had those moments where we jumped from the little bowl to the big bowl. And I love those stories. I currently have a radio show called Conversations That Count on 1290 AM at 5 PM on Fridays. But the, I, this is my favorite part of radio shows and, and interviews is there's always something that people have forgotten that they've done that is incredible. So I want to tell you about one of my friends from Chicago. And her name is Katie Mertens. And Katie is sight impaired, but that's the least of Katie's identity. Katie loves animals, and she's loved animals since she was very small. Her mother always had to limit the amount of animals that Katie would bring into the house because she would have had a house full of animals. And so um, Katie went on in her life. She was a special ed teacher, and then she went on to just devote her life to being with animals, and she became a pet massage therapist. Have you ever heard of a pet massage therapist? Maybe you have here in Santa Barbara. But in general, I'd never heard of a pet massage therapist. But this is what she went to study, and this is what she's doing. She's a pet massage therapist, and it's, it's beautiful. I, uh, just lots of people come, and their animals feel better. Doesn't it make sense, right? And so uh, Katie and her wife, Nori, and I went to visit my sister who lives in Anchorage, Alaska. And we went in the summer, only time I'm going. And, uh, and it was beautiful, and we went out to be with, um, Katie wanted to go and be with the, the dogs that run the Iditarod race in Alaska. And she, during the summer, they 
practice in th through the grass and the mud and, and it's this team of dogs and Katie and I and her and, and Nori went out to and it wasn't on my list of things to do and let me tell you but we went to do this and we went sledding in the grass with the um, Iditarod dogs and as we're out there Katie of course loved it we met the musher and the musher's friend and they all live with these dogs and and uh, Katie said to us after this experience um I should come here before the Iditarod race and massage these dogs. And we're looking at her like, that's in March, my friend. It's dark and it's cold. And his, her wife's sort of like, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, and we're all just listening to her talk. You know how you do when people are kind of saying things that you're trying to get it in your head how this is going to work. So it, every March, if you don't know about the Iditarod, it's, an, it's a thousand mile race across Alaska. And mushers from all over the world come and I don't get it and God bless these people, but in the dark and the cold and they and with, you know, they just, and they're standing up with 12 or so dogs. Anyway, look it up. I don't think you're going to, with this temperature, none of you are going. But it's fascinating. And it's, so it is a huge experience. And so Katie thought quite rightly that perhaps these dogs could use a massage and we're, you know, she's sight impaired so she usually needs to travel with someone and and I didn't see her wife getting too excited about it sorry Nori and um, and so we were um, in this interesting conversation but we, Katie kept talking about it and talking about it and before you know it she started writing some letters when she got back to the mushers and she got a couple of letters back that said this is a great idea I've never thought of this this is an amazing idea and so Katie, last March, went to Alaska. She found a woman that wanted to go and was very excited about the experience. And I wanted to show, and she was out with a couple of mushers massaging these dogs. And so she ended up on the news, and I want to show you a news clip of Katie and the Iditarod dogs. This is a woman living in her zone of genius. Here we go. <laughs> If there's one thing that brings people together around the Iditarod, it's a love for the dogs. I met, the first time I met the dogs was last summer when I came up here and I went to one of the kennels to go on a sled ride. And I just fell in love with the dogs and I thought, God, what an awesome opportunity. So Merton sent out letters to mushers, offering her services as a professional massage therapist. Just looking for any mushers who wanted their dogs to be worked on by a professional massage therapist and I thought it sounded like a great idea. And as soon as I got an answer yes, I said I'm doing it. She came all the way from Chicago and in just three days of working with the dogs, she has formed a bond with them. You could do it yesterday. I knew you could. I knew it. You're a superstar. Much like in massaging people, she she looks for tension built up in the larger muscles first. Um, sorry. So here, going along the spine, is the longest muscle in the body. Um, Merton's work comes with challenges. She is legally blind, so she spends more time talking and listening to the dogs to find where it hurts. And dogs are great communicators, but I really, really try to focus in and, you know, listen really well and feel their bodies, like if I feel a muscle spasm, to know that something's going on. And I need to be aware of that, and I need to be aware of how the dog's reacting to that. This is Elway, and after an hour of his massage, he went to sleep. For Hendrickson, the power of healing touch hits home. Well, I got injured really badly several years ago, um, and I have a lot of scar tissue and a lot of soft tissue damage, and without massage on a really regular basis, I just, I'm not functional, so it's, um, I know it works for me, and it definitely can help the dogs. Just for both women and for Hendrickson's dogs, their connection seems ordered. Divine order. Reporting in Willow, Michelle White, Your Alaska Link. Yay, Katie. So, uh, and if you are in uh, Chicago, it is the right spot pet massage dot com. Yes. Uh, so the idea is this woman is living in her zone of genius. Yes. And what did she do? She just realized what she loved. She's looking around in the world to say, what matters to me? What, what ideas do I have? Sometimes I think that one of the most spiritual things to say is, huh, huh. 
Why don't we say that together? Huh, right, right? It's just the idea of, I wonder if this would happen, yes? And so to allow, I guess, I, so it's really the ability to go beyond this little box in which we live. This is all what all of our spiritual masters taught when Jesus saw the, the gentleman that was sitting next to the healing waters and he'd been there a long time sitting on his mat saying, I can't get over to the healing waters. Everybody just passes me by. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, do you want to get well? That's what he said. Do you want to get well? He didn't say, you know, how long have you been sitting here, you lazy this and that? Or, you know, I know everybody in this world is really crummy. Nobody stops and talks anymore. He didn't say any of that. He said, do you want to get well? So here we are at this level of our zone of genius. Do you want to know that genius within yourself? And if so, say quietly, but yes. Can we say, do you want to know the genius within you? Yes. Very nice, okay? Because what the man said on his mat is he said, do you, want to get, do you want to be healed? And the man said, yes. And he said, so pick up your mat and walk. And I always joke and say, that was our first yoga teacher. <laughs> hey, you know? But um, it's my own private joke, clearly. But, um, but it is recognizing that we have that within us, but we have to be willing to be on this flight. We have to be willing to look around and see how the universe is plotting for your good. I have a mantra that is called the ultimate success mantra, and I'm going to put it up, and I'd like for us, I'll say it once, and then I want us to say it together. Because I expand an abundant success and love every day as I inspire others around me to do the same. Let's say it three times, all right? I expand an abundant success and love every day as I inspire others around me to do the same. I expand in abundant success and love every day as I inspire others around me to do the same. I expand in abundant success and love every day as I inspire around me to do the same. Yes. So, thank you for being on this flight, this thriving flight 2020. We know we have, you have many choices of airlines, many choices of thoughts, and it was a very good choice to be on this flight today. Ralph Alder Emerson tells us to stand guard at the portal of our mind, to be steadfast in knowing this light that is within you and this thriving nature that happens even in this life of uncertainty. It is your thriving that allows you to see what you need to see, to do what you need to do, to be in Alaska massaging dogs or just your next experience of your life. So again, thank you for flying with us. We will land soon and I hope you know that you can take this experience with you into every day, into every thought, into every moment, into every day and to allow that to be a life that not only works for you, but a world that will work for all. So again, thank you for flying the friendly skies and being in your zone of genius and know that this is your birthright and your way of living your life. Stay inspired. And so it is. So we are going to take a moment to do some healing. We can see that that little fish from the small bowl to the big bowl, there's healing that happens from the place that is the smaller self, the scared self, the I, I don't even know what to do self. And so we, we're going to close our eyes and, and be in this wonderful cocoon of community. And we're going to allow ourselves to be vibrated in a different, a different place, to allow ourselves to shake and let go of any old idea, any lower sense of consciousness to live in our zone of genius. And so I've invited, Terry Wilder is, a, uh, is going to play her gong. It's on a recording and it will be going on for three minutes. And I invite you just to allow yourselves to be gonged. I always say, stress too long, you need a gong. All right, so sit back and allow sound healing to happen.
Our zone of genius is as close as our breath. We allow ourselves to rest in our natural place of inspiration, which is where God resides. The light that was in you when you were born still shines brightly. So we let ourselves pay attention to our joy and take it seriously. And we feel gratitude for seeing how God's Spirit has guided us in every step, has so many magical and unseen, unknown things have come into being. So we let ourselves continue to be guided from that highest place within us, knowing that from that place we are naturally kind and generous and inspired and purposeful and at peace. Thank you, God, for our time together, for this message of light and love and genius within for those in our space and those out in our virtual world. We just let go and we let God. And so it is. Amen. marvelous words of wisdom and um, genius. I love that word. I met somebody a long time ago who wrote a book called Finding the Genius Within You. You can't help but read power words like this and, and want to have part of it awakened. Uh, the other word that came to me while I'm hearing you is the word brilliance. Oh, at least in peak moments I can appreciate some of the power of these, but even confidence is powerful to me and, and excellence. So thank you for lifting us up with this. You are a channel of blessing to us. This is the time for our offering. <clears throat> Please ponder briefly the good that you receive here, why we gather, the friendships that are unfolding, the insights that come the opportunities for learning, gaining, for how to walk the spiritual path, how to ooh, stay with it, work with it in all the different ways that it becomes available to us, and what you are called to do to support our efforts, volunteering and financially supporting us. We need your help. We do indeed. It's not a small endeavor that we are part of. There are many ways to support Unity. Of course, there's a Givelify app, which you can download separately, where you can sign up for recurring giving, which really connects you to the law of circulation, the law of generosity. These are real. Visit our website, santabarbarunity.org. Click Donate at the top, and you'll go to Givelify program again. If you're on Facebook Live, you'll see Givelify. And in the sanctuary here, we have boxes as we exit through these doors over here. Or you can go to the office afterwards and um, uh, take, uh, offer your credit card for whatever you think is appropriate for donating. However, if you give, give with gratitude. 
and thankfulness from what you receive from us and unity worldwide. We are part of a large movement, which is part of an even larger movement. And know that uh, we are creating, we are participating in creating what we really need, what we are looking for, and hopefully what the rest of the world needs. What you give will return multiplied many times, as Reverend Kathy used to say, not just 10, not just 100, 1,000 fold. <laughs> so let us bless this and many other channels of good. And at this time, <clears throat> hold your gift in your hand, your hand on your heart, and say these words with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I share. So we will sing quietly, I am so blessed. All right, here we go. I am, I am so blessed for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. Are we announcements next? I guess. <laughs> All right. So let me tell you, a lot going on here at our spiritual community. It's not just about Sunday for sure. Um, we will be, um, our usual th uh, schedule on, during the week is that we have a community chat at noon on uh, Tuesdays. And we have a Wednesday night meditation at 530 online. Both of those are online. And Terry Wilder, who did our um, gonging, will be with us on, uh, on Wednesday at 530. But she will also... Um, you know what? I forgot the song. Okay, so um, anyway, I knew there was, a, so excuse me, Zone of Genius, I'm uh, just up there in the clouds, and uh, so there'll be a song, I'll be back. to last till the end of time what the world needs now is love sweet love it's the only thing that there's just too little love what the world needs now is love sweet love no, not just for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another meadow. There are cornfields and wheat fields enough to grow. There are sunbeams and moonbeams enough to shine. Oh, listen, Lord, if you want to know. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing 
that there's just too little love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Yeah. All right. Where does that love come from? Y'all, yeah, great. Okay, so I want to tell you about a, a moment of love we had here. Uh, well, we have many moments of love, but uh, Thursday night we started uh, Showers of Blessings came to our parking lot from 3 to 6 on Thursday. It was, it was um, you know, really kind of beyond words, the, uh, the kindness and the love of the, the people that have put together Showers for Blessings and the unhoused guests that come to take, take showers. And it is a wonderful way. I'm just so grateful that we can use our property. Thank you for supporting this place that we can use our property to really serve our community in that way. Um, it's a wonderful way to volunteer and if you rather clothes, they need mainly men's clothes, uh, t-shirts, jeans, dark colors, socks, they give socks, um, and, and any um, kind of um, uh, um, kind of cleaning that is not a shampoo or a conditioner, a body lotion and um, antiseptic, the hand sanitizer. Anyway, so we, we're receiving those, so you can bring those in during the week. But anyway, if you want to be part of that experience, uh, you can contact Unity at santabarbarunity.org, and we're um, that's part of the outreach team, and we'd love to have you. Um, bring your clothes. There was one woman, Anne, and she loved your clothes. Thanks for bringing your clothes. She goes, is she small like me? I said, she is. And she has some really nice stuff, so look through that bag. You know, she was all excited. All right, um, so I, I, I told you about our usual things on during the week, which are great. And um, so next Saturday is our going to be our meditation day, and I invite you all to come. We're going to have gong uh, sound healing. We'll have silent meditation. We'll have walking meditation. We'll have eating meditation. We're going to eat in silence. We'll have some body movement. Movement. And so, but it'll all be in silence. And then from three to four, we will be sharing people's experience. And I am always amazed at what happens when we stop talking and start listening. And so it's $25 for the day. If, if, if that's a struggle at all, just tell us and you can, you know, do, pay what you need to pay or just, just come. But it's a Terry Wilder from Santa Barbara. Nope, she's from San Diego. And she's going to be here on, um, on that Saturday. And she's going to be singing next Sunday. So, but she will be here. And, and then she does gong sessions for people so we'd love you to come you can sign up out in the um, courtyard all of our you can sign up online and you can because it's going to be on zoom also but you can uh, also sign up out in the courtyard okay so we have another little experience that uh, Penny's going to be on over there mm -hmm. hey everybody needs love yeah, so I put together a lot of spells in my life, but this spell includes some really wonderful ingredients, fun, prizes, and great support for this spiritual community that really isn't all that spooky. But, uh, you know, I had, to, I had to get to work somehow today, so here you go, right? Um, anyway, oh, I forgot some of my little entre accoutrement over here. All right, so what we're doing is Friday, October 30th, we're having Spooky Bingo. And there is a $100 grand prize. And I want you all to go, ooh, ooh, right? So a $100 grand prize. And there are 10 games, and there'll be a prize for every game. So, you know, yeah, that's an ooh also. All right, so you, what you end up doing is getting a bingo booklet that has 10 games. See, like blue game, orange game, it's really simple, yeah? And, and we will be in person, and we will be on Zoom. And it's $25 for this, game, this booklet, which is 30 chances to win. 
And if you want to get five booklets, it's $100, and then there's $20 a booklet, and there are then 150 chances to win. So all of that is out there. And if you buy the $100 bit where you get five booklets, you get a free dopper. Come on. Ooh. Yeah, that's for like really quick. I seem to be the only bingo person around here, but yeah, you can go like that. It's really great. I'm all ready for my later, my retirement life. Bingo. So anyway, but these are really great, and they, uh, so if you get five books, you'll get that. And all of the proceeds are going to our wonderful AV group over there for a new camera, for mounting, for um, a booth. Look at them. They have to pull this table together every week. So let's give them a big hand. It's Finn and Penny and Gary and Greg. And let me tell you, it is a work of love what they're doing back there. And for, especially for you people online. So you can buy your booklet today. You can buy it online. And we'll scan it to you if you buy it online. Okay, so let me tell you, you want to exit these doors when you go out. That's the idea for the social distancing. Please social distance out there. There's tables to have anything you want. There's some flowers that I uh, have, uh, that if you take some flowers, it's fine. We'd love a love offering. It's all about, you know, keeping our lights on. And I do want to tell you that the trade, the flowers, oh, my hat is beyond, is messing this up. But the flowers, have inside So the flowers are donated by Trader Joe's and they've been designed by Barbara Berger. So let's give Barbara a hand for doing that. Yes. And if you feel like you're missing anything, because Lord knows I can't keep up with most of these things, um, go to our website, santabarbarunity.org, and sign up for the e-newsletter. This was a little cartoon that we used in Chicago. The dinosaurs missed the boat, you know, and that's why they're not here anymore. So you all want to, um, you know, make sure that you're on our e-news, and that's where all the uh, information is if you miss anything. Okay, thank you for coming. Thanks for being on the flight. And... Um, Keep your consciousness up and be with us. All right, here's Jim, Wonderful. Dr. Jim. Well, you've already thanked almost everybody who has helped put the service together, but I want to say one more word for the volunteers, temperature takers, Noreen, so good to have you here. So now let us stand and sing the peace song. protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am that light. The love of God enfolds us. I am that love. The power of God protects us. I am that power. The presence of God watches over us. I am that presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. That's right. Zone of genius, everybody. Keep your business as you file out through the doors here, please. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Doreen.